the Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Company with Jim Jordan as Fibber, Donald Novice, The Four Notes, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Of The I Sing. a few weeks away, and something in the air tells us it's time to make our homes brighter and fresher looking. When you feel this first urge of spring, you'd better hurry to your dealer or phone him and ask for a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Then let this easy-to-use liquid polish make your floors sparkle and gleam like new. Glow coat is a perfect spring tonic for dreary floors. Just put a little glow coat on your linoleum and paint it in varnished wood floors, too. Let it dry for 20 minutes, then see the beautiful shining polish. Protecting your floors from dirt and wear. Takes only a few minutes to apply glow coat, and there's no rubbing or buffing. You'll have more time for rest and play, and you can forget all about tiresome floor scrubbing when your floors are wearing a lustrous glow coat polish. Insist on the real thing. G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. <laughs> Hunter Lord Bingham is in town this week seeking a partner for his next African expedition. And here in the living room at 79 Wistful Vista, swapping hunting experiences with his lordship, or in other words, taking alternate slices at the bologna, we find Fibber Hold That Tiger McGee. <laughs> And so I had the skin of the vicious brute made into a rug for my library. It still growls whenever I enter the room. <laughs> <laughs> it does, eh? Did I tell you about the time I trailed the leopard 40 miles through the brush and then discovered it was a stray mule? What? An experienced hunter mistaking a mule for a leopard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems I was in a kind of a bilious condition and had spots before my eyes. <laughs> uh, by the way, McGee, how much time did you spend in Africa? Oh, oh, several years. I had a trading post up in the pygmy country. Oh, yeah, that's where that sand got started. This little pygmy went to market. Oh, 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 oh yes, very good, very good. Oh, pygmy went to market. Oh, yes, very good. I like to have a man with me who has a sense of humor, McGee. Keeps the natives happy. You must have been a splendid companion on a long trek. Oh, that's what everybody used to say, bud. I was really a card on a long trek. <laughs> card Trek McGee, I was known as in them days. <laughs> card Trek McGee, the cleverest khaki-clad kid who ever kept a camp in the cruel climate of the carbon continent, calmly collecting creeping cobras to classify and catalog for keen-eyed collectors, casually clicking cameras at carnivorous cats, continually convulsed at the cute conversational comebacks to tackling cockatoos, and concentrating on carving a career as the King Kong of the Congo from the Cape of Good Hope's cloudy dunes to carefree Cairo and the Cameroon. <laughs> I think you're just the man I'm looking for, McGee. I'm sure of it. But how is your health? <laughs> how do you stand up under terrific hardships? Hardships? Why, bud, would you believe it? Last December, I sat through six double features in one week. <laughs> no. Yes, on my word. My word. <laughs> and I thought I had experience suffering, McGee. <laughs> I think we'll make a great team in Africa. I think so. I never thought I'd meet a man who was so utterly fearless, so absolutely courageous. Let me think it over for a few hours, and I shall be back with my decision. Okay, I'll be waiting, Bingham. But hurry back. Right there. <laughs> Hot dog. I guess I convinced him I wasn't scared of nothing. <laughs> Boy, when we get to Africa... Hey! Get away from me! Help! 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 Hey! Hey! 
What's the matter, Fibber? What's wrong? Why, you're as white as the sheet. Did, did, did you see it? See what? Stop trembling and tell me what's the matter. Oh, I think it went under the Davenport there. What did? What are you talking about? Control yourself. Boy, I thought I was a goner for a minute. He, he looked right at me. What did? The mouth. <laughs> the mouth. Aren't you ashamed? What will Lord Bingham say if he finds out you're afraid of a mouth? Oh, don't tell him, Harpo. i got to get rid of that mouth some way. What do I do? Set a trap. Hey, that's an idea. I'll set a trap and bait it with a perfumed note. Perfumed note? To a mouth? Yeah, you know. Come up and see me sometime. Signed, Minnie. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, you could do that. But I've got a better idea. I'm going out and send you an exterminator. Oh, okay, Harlow. Thanks. All the times for this to happen. Well, I guess I'll set a trap and then go stay at a hotel till the mouse is caught. <laughs> at least till Molly gets home. Shucks, I ain't got a trap. I better go down to the hardware store and get one. Uh-oh. Hello there, Johnny! How'd you like to buy a rubber door knocker? Protect you from magazine salesmen and peddlers. <laughs> <laughs> No, thanks, old-timer. Hey! <laughs> I says, no, I don't want any rubber door knockers. If any peddlers come to my door, I'll take the rat. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> the way I hear it. Who was that I just hear? <laughs> That's a mouse, old-timer. He just moved in here with me. <laughs> he left home because his old man was a rat. <laughs> oh, well, the way I hear it, Johnny, one fellow says to the other fellow, says, am I glad to be back in America where everything is peaceful? I just got back from a motor trip through Europe. That's so, says the other fellow. Cross country? Oh, boy, says the first fellow. I'll say it is. <laughs> Incidentally, Johnny, you're getting kind of cheap, ain't you? Getting a mouse for a guest star? <laughs> he's just jealous of that mouse. He thinks he's got the exclusive right to wear whiskers on this show. Hello, Fibber. Oh, hi, Billy. Say, ain't you supposed to be working on Don Novus' song? You mean Phil the Fluter's Ball? Yeah. Oh, I finished that. It didn't take time to go out and eat. Oh, gee, that's tough, Billy. Oh, I don't mind. I've got a cheese sandwich in my pocket. Not so loud, Billy. There's a mouse in here. <laughs> if he hears you talking... Hey, look out! There he is! Look out, Billy! Hey, he's running up your pant leg! Which one? <laughs> the left one! <laughs> that's a joke on him. The sandwich is in the other pocket. Oh. <laughs> Take it, Don. <laughs> Have you heard of Phil the Fluter of the town of Ballymook? Ah, oh, the times were going hard with him. In fact, the man was broke. So he just sent out a notice to his neighbors, one and all. That's how he liked the company that evening at the ball. But when writing out, he was careful to suggest to them that if they found a habit is convenient to the door, the more they put in whenever he requested them, the better would the music keep a father in the floor. With a tooth on the flute and a twiddle on the fiddle, oh, hopping in the middle like a heron on the griddle, oh, down hands around across and through the wall, oh, hadn't we a day if he had filled the fluted ball? There was little Mickey Mulligan got up to show him how. And then the way the cavity steps out and makes a bow. I could dance you off your legs as she is sure as you were born. If you'll only make the piper play, the hair is in the corn. So Phil play his up to the best of his ability. The lady and the gentleman begin to do their hair. Grayson and Mickey, it's you that has the jealousy. Big Ari, Mrs. Cavity, you're leaving like a hair. Die, 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 die
lip to crooked fat. I think it's nearly time to leave for passing round the hat. So her paddy passed the cordine round and looking mighty cute. Says you got to pay the piper when he threw the on the flute. Then all jogging in with the great and joviality. Covering the buckle and the shuffle and the cut. Did you want her dance of the very finest quality? But the widow beat the company is handled in the foot. With a twist on the blue stand, a twiddle on the bit low, a hop it in the middle like a hair, a twiddle low, up, down, and round across to the wall. Oh, hand me a gaiety, a chill of Ball, adroitly rendered by Donald Novus, the Killarney Canary. <laughs> Thanks, River. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Don. I always like to... Excuse me a minute. Come in. Say, so a guy named Wilcox says you wanted to exterminate her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, bud. What's the idea of bringing the machine gun? You said there was a rat here you wanted rubbed out. <laughs> okay, it's time to get the wall. Oh, hey, hey, cut it out. That ain't the rat. I mean... <laughs> That's Don Novus, our singer. You misunderstood. I just wanted some mice exterminated. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Phew. Gee, thanks, Fibber. I thought he was going to shoot me there for a minute. <laughs> oh, I couldn't let him do that, Don. I just had this wall papered. <laughs> Hiya, Fibber. Get rid of the mouse yet? No, I ain't, Harpo. And if Lord Bingham comes back and sees me getting jittery at a little mouse... He won't take me to Africa with him. Gee, that would be too bad. We'd love to see Fibber go to Africa, wouldn't we, Harlow? Oh, at least. (laughs) Thanks, fellas. I hope you mean that in a way it certainly didn't sound like. I suppose you think I'm kind of foolish letting a little mouse make me nervous, but I I just can't help it. Oh, think nothing of it, Fibber. Besides, mice won't stay long in your house. (laughs) Why, Harpo? Stand by, Racine. Well, I'll tell you, any house that has glow coat on its floors and linoleum is too clean to attract mice. Crumbs are too easily swept up and grease spots wipe right off. <laughs> and when you stop to think that glow coat can be applied with no rubbing or buffing by simply pouring a little on the floor and spreading it around with a long-handled applier, well, it begins to look like a tough world for a little musk musculus. Yeah, a little who, Harpo? <laughs> musk musculus. That's the Latin name for mouse. Oh, do mice understand Latin? <laughs> no, but I understand mice. And they won't stay in a clean house. Oh. Why, just the other day, I overheard one mouse say to another mouse, quote, Come on, Nicky. There's nothing for us around here. They use Johnson's glow coat. Let's step over to the house next door where a guy can see you right at home. Unquote. <laughs> That was very sweet, Harpo. (laughs) You sounded almost as good as Novus. Well, I got to run down to the hardware store and get a mouse trap. I'll see you later, fellas. I'm going to get rid of that mouse before old Bingham gets back. I better hurry. Uh, Hey, control room, how are we for time? Better snap it up a little. Okay. In that case, folks, here's the hardware store right here. (laughs) Some people say that radio ain't a flexible medium. Yes, sir? What was it, sir? <laughs> Show me some traps, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, what do you wish to catch? A mouse, Dad read it. Yes, sir. A small mouse or a large mouse? <laughs> oh, about medium, Bill. <laughs> Gray hair, pink eyes, and four-inch tail, and a 32-inch sleeve. <laughs> yes, sir. Just step over here, sir. We've quite a beautiful selection of mouse traps. I don't care how beautiful they are. I ain't giving this to a mouse for Christmas. I want to catch one in it. I don't want no moose mouseculus in my house. Moose mouseculus, sir? Yeah, that's Latin for mouse. Really? Gee, you must be a college man, sir. Oh, I am. Phi Beta Trapper. <laughs> Bud, show me something. Time's wasting. Yes, sir. Now, now here is a very efficient mouse trap, sir. Gee, that looks kind of complicated. Take a smart mouse to get caught in that thing. 
Yeah. It's really very simple, sir. Oh, see? It. it connects to any light socket. Uh-huh. The miniature projector throws a picture of a piece of cheese on the little screen in Technicolor. <laughs> the mouse walks down the center aisle here to watch the show. Uh-huh. And as soon as he sits down, it flips this spring, and this little toy usher runs down and grabs him by the back of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but ain't you got just a simple old-fashioned wire mouse trap that you slap a hunk of cheese onto and let nature take its course? No, sir. I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, gee. Okay, bud. You may go. Or, or no, uh, you stay here. I'll go. <laughs> Fine hardware store. Well, I got to get rid of that mouse before old Bingham comes back. What can I do to get rid wonder what Frank Buck is doing these days. Oh, why, how do you do, Mr. McGee? Oh, my, so nice to see you, really. Hi, Mrs. Uppington. Say, you look very gay and happy today with that new hat. <laughs> it is new, ain't it? <laughs> it is a hat, ain't it? <laughs> oh, my, you man, my goodness. Horatio said exactly the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, Horatio K. Boomer. <laughs> You still seeing a lot of him, Uppy? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, but not nearly enough, Miss McGee. <laughs> uh, tell me, Miss McGee, do you think a girl should refuse a date occasionally? Does it really keep a man interested? Hmm? Well, I don't know, Uppy, but I think the right way to keep old Boomer interested is to put your porch swing in the lobby of the First National Bank. <laughs> Mr. McGee, I think you misjudge Horatio. Oh, no, he loves me for myself alone. Oh, sure. Oh, Just last night I asked him if he thought a few gray hairs made a girl unattractive. And he said, Abigail Sugar Lamb. Just because there's a little snow on the roof doesn't mean the fire has gone out in the house. <laughs> That was so sweet of him. <laughs> so he calls you sugar lamb, eh? He would. The minute he gets his hands on the sugar, he's going to take it on the lamb. <laughs> now, please, Mr. McGee, I'm sure that he's very sincere. Why, just yesterday, while he was helping me clip some coupons, he said to me, Little flower, if you will be my pearl, the world will be my oyster. <laughs> oh, dear, and you know the poor boy was in such an emotional state. He put four of my coupons on his watch chain and left his elk's tooth in my safety deposit box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I know true love when I see it. <laughs> or do you think I'm just being a silly girl? <laughs> Well, it's so nice to see you again, Mr. McGee. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. If you be my pearl, the world is my oyster. <laughs> and what a stew she's going to wind up in. Well, hello there, Fisher. What is the idea of you walking along talking to yourself like a bump on a monologue? <laughs> well, I'm worried, Nick. I got a mouse in the house. You know a good way to get rid of him? Well, I was reading about one way in little storybooks I'm reading last night, which is calling itself by the title, which the name of it was The Pie-Eyed Piper of Hamlet. And it's seen about a man who was playing Get Out of Town to a bunch of rats on his saxophone. drawing. <laughs> oh, you mean the Pied Piper of Hamlin who led the rats out of town with his magic flute? Sure. Well, sir, this pie-eyed piper of Hamborn, he is getting a contract from the master burglar of the town to give all the little mouses the bum's rush. You grab me? So the master burglar... Master burglar? Master burglar. Oh, you mean burgomaster. It is the same difference, Peter. <laughs> because when the rats are all being jitter-bubbed out of town, this burglar maestro is saying to the pie-faced piper, Ha, ha, he is saying. If you think we are paying you for the job, Squeegee, you are a bad mistake. You'd better get out of town and we are throwing you in the Telegoose for fragrancy. <laughs> fragrancy? Yes, and they could do it, too, because the whole proposition is smelling very bad, if you know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I know, Nick. So in revenge, he started shooting his piccolo, and all the children followed him out of town and were never seen again. That is a very good synopsis push of how the book is ending itself, Peter. And the moral of the story is being... If you are teaching a bad example by acting like a rat, don't blame the kids if they're wanting a new tutor. Well, so long, Peter. <laughs> so long, Nick. Take it, Billy. Chopsticks, oh, chopsticks, there's nothing 
like chopsticks to help any romance along. Four hands start playing and two heads start playing and two hearts start singing a song. And if one of us makes any music mistake, we always chop, 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 chop in the fix. No need to get mad, for there's nothing so bad that a kiss or two or three couldn't fix. folks getting a surprising amount of musical nourishment with chopsticks. Well, thanks, boys and girls. Well, I hope that, hope that mouth is gone for good. I wonder where the dead, dreaded little baseboard bladder skite is now. <laughs> You'd just like him to sneak up and put his cold nose on the back of my neck. Oh, oh why do I think of such things? Be calm, McGee. He won't hurt you. How do you know he won't? <laughs> well, he won't, that's all. Oh, yeah? What do you know about mice? Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, keep quiet. I won't keep quiet. I'll talk about it. Uh-oh. There he is. No, oh, that can't be the mouse. That mouth was too tall. <laughs> Come in. Good day, paper clamp. Uh-oh. I understand you're having some trouble with one of our little four-footed friends. <laughs> That's right, Boomer. Why don't you get a set of traps for the little bees? <laughs> like the trap you're setting for Mrs. Uppingen, eh? I want to warn you once more about trying any of your chiseling tactics on her, Boomer. You're just the type that would break a woman's heart and patch it up again with itching powder. <laughs> I know your game. Catch as he'll foil me yet. <laughs> what you want to see me about? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. I came in to sell you my own patented mouse trap, McGee. The Boomer Beastie Basket. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see it, Boomer, and hurry up. I'm expecting company. Certainly, certainly. Where well, put that mouse trap? Mouse trap, mouse trap. I'm here somewhere. Here's a rare and valuable first edition of Shakespeare I just got from the library. Don't ask me whose library. Here's an invitation to a class reunion at dear old Leavenworth. Ah, oh, the good old days in Cooler College. How proud I was when I won my letter in the pole vaulting event. Fifty feet ahead of the bloodhound. <laughs> the mouse trap, Boomer, the mouse trap. Ah, yes, coming to it, pork shank, coming to it. Where's that mouse trap? Here's a china egg, very handy for knitting socks, or stocking knitwear. <laughs> Valentine from Sheila the shoplifter. Poor girl. Her bloomers took an unexpected stretch, and so did she. <laughs> Small check for a shorter beer. Well, well, imagine that. No mouse trap. Well, I must be off. I'm going to help the man unload a truck. There he goes now. Hi, Jack. <laughs> crack in that guy's conscience so wide it'd make the Grand Canyon look like the dimple in a golf ball. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'll bet that's Bingham. Come in. Oh, hi, 
Lord, Bingham. I'm glad to see you again. I have a chair. Thanks, I have one. Oh, you got two? Oh, no. <laughs> that was cigars, wasn't it? <laughs> well, what did you decide, Bingham? You think I'd make a good partner for a big game expedition? I most certainly do, McGee. I most certainly do. Oh, fine. But there's one thing I must impress upon you. What's that, Lord Bingham? Well, McGee, it's a rather delicate subject. Do you understand that I can't have anybody with me who doesn't measure up to my own standard of cool courage? My calmness in moments of danger. Why, oh, sure. Remember, I won't always be there to protect you. Oh, I understand that, bud. I can take care of myself, I can. Splendid. We must depend upon each other in emergencies, you know. Oh, absolutely. Two brave hearts that beat as one. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> Look out, Bingham. There he is. Hey, there's that now. What? Look out. Oh, my goodness, a mouse. Get me out of here. Help! 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 I say, McGee, is that you in this closet with me? Yes, it is, Bingham. Where are you? It's dark in here. I'm up on the top shelf here behind the hat. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable, too. <laughs> Where are you, McGee? I'm hanging on two hooks with my feet in the umbrella stand. <laughs> Kind of cramped, but I can take it. <laughs> stout fellow, McGee, stout fellow. You know, I'm looking forward to our trip to Africa. Uh, our trip? You, you mean you're taking me? Why, certainly, my dear chap. I find you a very valuable man in the crisis. Huh? How so? If it hadn't been for you, I never would have found this closet. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. Now, here's an important announcement. For a limited time, your dealer is offering giant-sized cans of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's wax paste or liquid at the same price as the regular sizes. Now, it's your opportunity to save money, for these giant sizes hold one-third more than the regular sizes. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that these special giant-sized cans of Johnson's wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat are selling fast. Women are delighted with these big cans, which contain one-third more than the regular sizes, and yet cost not a penny more. When these giant-sized cans are gone, there won't be any more, so you are urged to take advantage of this special offer without delay. Phone your dealer or go to the store the first thing tomorrow morning and get a supply of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in the special money-saving giant sizes. Well, folks, you'll be glad to hear that we're going to have our old friend Zazer Pitts back with us again next week. <laughs> it's a good thing she wasn't here tonight, or I don't know what she'd have done. <laughs> Personally, I was just acting. Mice don't frighten me. <laughs> hey! Hey! There really is a mouse in here! Take him away! Help! Help! Thank you.